Welcome back to Ace Run Pro's coverage of the 2023 Savannah Open, presented by Dynamic Discs. I'm Jacob Chesser, joined by Adam Howard. What's going on, Adam? You know, we're back at it again, ready to do this uh, back nine coverage here, the short tees during round two. Um, we've got Zach, Ben, Jacob Chester and Martin Nice here on the card. I'm sure we've got some great stuff coming up. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, if you've made it this far, like, subscribe, follow all of our accounts. Ace Run Pro, me and Adam, we'd appreciate it. We got some uh, some nice holes coming up here, starting with hole 10. Yep, we got hole 10, a par 3, 326 feet. Um, from the short pad for our right-handed players, this is just going to be an overstable forehand where you're going to try to get a really big skip off to the right. Zach's probably going to have an easy time here throwing an overstable backhand. Um, you've got to get pretty far over here to the right really late, so it's more of a uh, you know more of a skip kind of line. Um, your other option is to hang it really high, but some of the magnolias come into play later down the fairway if you try to put some height on it. Yeah, just like you're talking about Martin cranking on a forehand. And he's out there in circle two. So what are you throwing here? Is this another Firebird? Is this kind of what you're reaching yeah. to a lot? Yeah, yeah. From these short pads, it's a lot of Sexton Firebirds. Um, and that's exactly what this is. Mine was, it was hyzering in right toward the back of the circle. Got a little kick. Mm -hmm. Still out there in circle two. The ben gets caught up in the magnolias. Yeah, that's that's kind of what comes into play with that higher line, but he's going to have a pretty good look at a birdie here. Yeah, and like you said, Zach, taking the lefty hyzer. Saws this one off. Early release, yeah. There is a second fairway over there, but I'm pretty sure he's going to go straight at it right through all these trees. He's got a little line to hit. Great scramble there from Zach. That'll be a tap very, in for his par. Good. Very technical approach there. Also, um, par is pretty good on this hole. It actually averaged um, 0.13 under par, which is really surprising to me. You know, this is not a gimme. You know, this is a pretty difficult one to give yourself a close look at. Yeah, me and Martin had some, some magnolia branches and stuff to contend with and not exactly what we're wanting to do here on this hole like you mentioned this isn't the hardest hole but pars pars are usually good in the mpo field oh there it is that's a nice tap in good tap in from ben Four pars. And it looks like we've, you know, still got a pretty large score discrepancy here with you and Martin kind of playing your own game. Uh, moving on now to hole 11 from our red pads. This is a par three coming in at 248 feet. For the right-handers, this is going to be um, another kind of sharp backhand hyzer angle with uh, overstable putter or mid-range most likely. Um, I would imagine Zach's going to go with either a Justice or that Saki Slammer here on a forehand. Really weird angle, kind of like the next hole. Just a really like, you, you got to throw something like 200 feet straight and then it's got to almost make like a 90 degree turn left. So you got to release it on almost like a spike hyzer angle or you can, oh, it'll look perfect and you'll somehow kiss a tree at the end. Yep. You've also really got to give this one some height unless you're trying to lean on that ground play. Um, this one looks like it's a pretty good shot out of you here. And good ground play. Wow, absolutely parked. Fantastic shot. Is that the A2 again? That's the A2 again. Another like spike hyzer angle. Just to try and make the disc thinner to fit through these tiny gaps here. Yep. Ben throws a good shot. It just kind of runs into a pile of leaves. It throws an e-brake on it. Um, but he's right there at the edge of the circle. Looks like Zach goes with more of a fairway, um, and he's right there at the edge of the circle, maybe a step or two inside of it. We'll get a good look at Martin's distance putting here. And he just puts a little Martin's bit too much. Martin's putting into a straight headwind <laughs> yeah. right there. 
so it flipped him right on over. You can just hear the wind whipping. This is not straightforward, and it, oh, wow. and it just straight lifts him up. Yeah. That's what happens, um, you know, for anybody that's not familiar, if you're putting into a headwind, um, it's generally going to lift your disc. Wow, what a great putt from Zach. Zach got the wind read from them, too. Played it right at the top of the basket, a little bit of nose up, and just rode the wind right up into the middle of the chains. That was a great adjustment after watching his two card mates. Ben knowing that now he's putting in a tailwind, it's going to drop his disc, aims it up at the band, and that tail, that strong tailwind just mashes it right down. And great job of, you know, adjusting for the wind on that one, Jacob. That was an incredible putt. You know, you really can't do it much better than that from 10 feet. Thank you. Thank you. So pretty good hole there. Looks like you're going to pick one up. Um... And we're moving on. Hole 12. Um, from the short pads, we've got a little bit better of an angle here towards the basket. This is coming in at 282 feet. No real um, out of bounds to worry about. For our right-handers, um, I think the best play here is a panning turnover backhand with either a putter or a mid-range. The forehand is also in play. Um, but we'll see what these guys decide to go with. So if you understand the angle of the holes, the one we just played up, playing up the fairway was a straight headwind. This one's playing perpendicular to that one, or not perpendicular, but parallel, but the opposite direction. So this is a straight tailwind on this one now. Um, so it's wanting to push our discs down really, really hard. And Zach electing to go with the uh, Anheuser lefty forehand here again and doing a great job of it, giving himself a birdie look. Um, I really... I'm really enjoying watching his shot selection on some of these holes. You know, it's a lot, it's, it's different than what I would imagine I would do as a lefty. Martin, a really good straight mid range thrower. He's reaching for his buzz here, turns it beautifully, puts it right there at about 22 feet, pin high. Very well done by Martin. Ben trying to follow his vapor trails here. This is looking great. Puts it right right there about 20 feet short of the basket you'll take those two shots every single day of the week <sighs> a couple steps outside of the circle for me needed to give it some height tailwind dropped me down a little bit zach really hanging on to these um and you know still missing left um with yours with this wind you know especially if you're taking these circle two putts you're in the position you're in in the tournament this early um, you know, that's that's not a that's not a terrible miss, you know, to miss low, um, you know, with any kind of wind. If you give it a really, really confident bid, you know, and shoot over the top to the edge of the circle, it can spiral down quickly. We've come back from Zach there. Yeah, Zach's not going to be happy about that, but he's done a really good job making his comebackers, even though he's not happy with the with the deep, you know, circle one bids. Yep. He's still giving himself a bunch of looks. Uh, looks like Martin is going to pick another one up on you there um, and have a two-stroke lead going into hole 13, which is a par three coming in at 280 feet. We've got a Mando on this light pole to the left that the drone is flying by. Basically, you're just going to want to square up this gap and then have something fade out to the left um, back towards the basket. You do have the out-of-bounds path on the right. Um, so if you have something straighten up or if you have a headwind that's going to straighten your disc up, um, you can get into trouble pretty quick on this hole. Yeah, this hole averaged exactly three mm -hmm. on the dot. Um, and so, yeah, it's, you know, the gap's not that far off the tee. You know, pretty much everyone in the MPO field should be able to reach this. Martin gives it a good run there. Um, Kind of pick your favorite shot to throw a 300 foot hyzer with, or yep, I guess what is it, two about 280. Um, and just kind of give it a go. Oh my oh god, wow. Ben drained it as it was cruising through the gap there. What a run! That is awesome. I love to see it. Um, so for this hole at this tee pad, you're really throwing from the ideal landing zone from the golden black tees that we saw at round one, right. Uh, 
Zach keeping that forehand oh, low. Back Come in. on. Yeah. And gets back in. The wind pops him up and over. Gets him onto that sidewalk. Real sketchy, but it gets back into the grass. He'll take his meter and he'll be in the circle. Fantastic break there. Um, man, that was right on the edge the whole time. So talk me through what happened on this one. Is this an uncommitted putt or do you have a big tailwind or what's going on? No, it's just swirling wind. It's um, just a lot of oh, oh, my no. games of myself, kind of the same way Zach is. Just a lot of thinking. You can see the wind flopping his disc over. I mean, it's there's no excuse. I mean, we're playing on the NPO field here. From, from inside the circle, we got to be hit in the middle. Just, you know, uncommitted and not focused. Oh, my oh, goodness. <laughs> Squeaks it in. We'll take it. Yeah, I mean, the wind is most definitely playing games with us, but, you know, like I said, at, at this level, yeah. you really got to be heart and circle one putts. I'll also say on your uh, drop in there, you know, making it very obvious your hand leaving the disc, that is a rule. So for anybody that's not familiar, you do have to let the disc leave your hand, even when you're dropping it in like that. All right, so we got hole 14 here. Um, pretty straightforward, 266. So this is a much easier location um, than we were playing from the black and gold pads. Um, you can kind of take your favorite straight putter, maybe mid-range, throw it, get a little turn out of it for the right-handed player. Um, the forehand is also available. Um, if you're throwing, again, kind of like a putter approach, mid-range type of disc as well. Martin's gonna elect for the forehand line here. Just a couple trees you gotta miss late. Good ground play goes and around. He does just that. Oh, and gives it a chance. Tries to jump it in. Goes right under the basket. Great shot there. Ben also going the forehand, giving this a lot more height. He's gonna finish off to the right, but he'll have himself a putt. I, um, you know, typically see a lot more backhands. I'm kind of surprised to see three righty forehands out of you guys. Is this a zone from you on this one? This is a zone. This is my kind of straight, to, you know, quote unquote flippier zone. Um, my more understable one. Oh my goodness! Um, is even Zach's? We're going all four hands here. Even the lefty. All four hands. Four for four. That's just gets a little more over on it than he wanted, but another another open look for him. Oh, what a mid! And. You know, that's one of those putts that you're, you know, you're frustrated it didn't go in and it was so close to going in, but you hit metal from, you know, 45, 50 feet, whatever that was. So, you know, it's kind of a bittersweet thing. Yeah, and you can just tell Zach's a little frustrated from the round. He's just been two inches off on a lot of these putts and, you know, that can kind of weigh on you a little bit after, yep. you know, when we go back and look at his horrible back-to-back -back spit outs and just a couple of chain outs and, that can definitely weigh on you and get in your mind a little bit. Now we've got the long walk to hole 15. Martin's still holding on to that two-stroke lead, but you're sticking right with him. And here we go, hole 15, par three from the red pads. This is only a 130 foot hole, but I promise you, uh, it's not an easy one. It's, it's averaging 2.53. Um, you know, if you if you see a 130 foot hole, you would think everybody just about is birding this one, but it's definitely not the case. You've still got a very tight fairway. You've still got a very guarded basket between these four trees here. So we'll see what happens on this. And Martin with the jump putt, you'll love to see it. 
Yeah, it gets a little too overturned. Another one? Kick, kicks him over there, back to back jump putts. Makes the correction absolutely perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's five it. feet left. The distance is true here. This is only 130 feet. So, I mean, that's every single bit of uh, jump up power I've got. But Great shot there yeah, from Ben. You can do it. You got to do it. And again, Zach, yeah. really surprising me here throwing a lefty forehand on this hole, but he does it. Throws it straight into the ground to check it up. I love that play. Martin's got a window. No, the... no doubt. This bangs it. Great putt. Great two. No hesitation. Picks up the disc, throws it in the basket. Um, is he still putting with fierces? Do you know? He is. Okay. He is. The super glidey, very, very straight. Um, you can kind of see that, you know, whenever he has some of these longer bids. Um, it's a pretty cool line that he takes when he's when he's throwing these long putt. So very well done uh, from our card here. Um, can't really do it much better than that. Um, that's what you want to see on a 130 foot hole, but I, you know. I know I've definitely taken a double bogey from there. Moving on to <laughs> moving on to hole 16, we have a 325 foot par three. Um, this one for our righties is just a really big backhand hyzer. The hard part for this is not the distance. The hard part is getting back far enough left off the tee. Um, you've got a couple of trees to contend with and some tall grass that will mitigate your skip. Um, so you're going to throw something really, really glidey on a lot of hyzer. You're going to throw it high to give it time to get back to the left. Um, Zach, I'd imagine, is probably going to throw the forehand. Yeah, you've either got to get something high and miss some branches or hug the right tree oh, my um, to be able to get it back all the way to the left. Obviously, hugging the tree brings a little more um, danger into play. I'm a little deeper and further right here than I wanted, yep. but it is open from back there in circle two. What's the uh, wind doing for you guys on this hole? Because that can be a huge factor when you're trying to glide something back to the left. Yeah, on this one it was swirling for us, kind of right here in between the open and the, and the woods. It was kind of swirling, so we couldn't really get a good gauge for what was happening. Oh, great ground play there from Zach. That's ideal. Um, skipping over that tall grass, not getting caught up in it. He's going to have a pretty close look for a birdie. Yeah, and he hugged that tree really well. So you don't have to get a ton of height, but you got to get kind of risky as hugging that tree. Threw a great disc, great shot selection. Martin with a really tight line. He was trying to sneak through there. A little unlucky kiss off a tree. Looks like you're reaching for a BT or a, a medium plastic pure here on this long run. Um, can you tell us who gave you that putter? Um, yeah, actually, that was uh, Adam Howard. Okay, cool. I thought so. And uh, big shout out to Adam Howard. Appreciate that. Sometimes they go in. And when they do, they grab the chains pretty well when I put them right. That was a really good run from Ben there, just missing off the top. Um, you know, plenty of commitment, just, just just a hair off. Let's see if Zach can connect for the birdie. Oh, and it barely catches. That was so close again, but this one goes his way. Never a doubt from Zach. We knew it was in the whole time. And another one he deserved. Glad to see him, you know getting one of those kind of 50-50 catches going his way. He looked like he was about to be just trapped in a glass case of emotion. Happens to the best of us. Sure does, sure does. So you're going to pick one up here um, on Martin. Close that lead to one stroke here at the uh, towards the end of our round. And now we're moving into hole 17, which is one of my favorite holes in this layout, just because it is an awesome ace run. Um, there's really not much out of bounds to think about. The, the road is out of bounds on your left here, but it doesn't really come into play very often. It's 264 feet right in front of you. Pick out your straightest disc out of your bag and try to run it. Yeah, it's definitely one play. Um, that's probably the preferred play. I'm pretty sure me and Zach are going to flex something here. Because that's more of our preferred play. But Zach gets a little bit too over on his. Um, we've got a headwind coming through here. Um, so that normally, what normally would be just a dead straight shot was kind of a little sketchy. I, I go to an A2 here and try and flex it. 
and I get oh my God. the sweetest kick off a tree. I thought I was getting the tree ace. <laughs> like tree, yeah. That uh, is so cool. You love to see it. It would have been really cool, but I'm not mad about it, too. Oh, we see Ben here going with the forehand line. Is he going outside? He is. He's yeah. going way outside. Oh, just barely missing it. But sticks to his finger just a little more than he was wanting and kisses the outside of that tree. Martin doing commentary of his own there. Not what he was one. Been reaching that forehand again, looking pretty good. He's going to give himself a circle one look to save his par. Uh, Martin wasting no time at all. Uh, just pitching up. Very, very close. He'll have a tap in for a par as well. This is this is one you really want to get. You know, it's, it's right in front of you off the tee. Good clean up there from Ben. Looks like that CTP flag is very close. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it's also flapping. Yeah. Very uncharacteristic yeah. miss from uh, probably inside 20 feet there from Martin. He'll take a bogey. And yeah, it's not losing necessarily hard putts, but when the wind's been just raging all day, it just makes you always second guess. Yep, for sure. You know what you're doing, your normal stroke. It makes you take an extra breath on your routine, and um, you know, just plays with your mind. You know, another thing that might be on Martin's mind right now is with that. That is a two-stroke swing, which gives you a one-stroke lead going into the final hole of round two here at the Savannah Open. Yeah, a little flip-flop of us there going into the last hole. Still a ton of golf to play. Oh, yeah. Um, our last hole for this round is hole 18, which is a par 3 coming in at 215 feet. You've got out-of-bounds path on the right. Um, you've got, again, you know, as with all these wooded holes here at Tom Triplett Park, a lot of trees to contend with. You've got a couple of different gaps that you can try to throw through to reach this basket as a right-handed backhand player. Um, we'll see which route everyone decides to go. Um, the more popular play is going around pretty wide on the right side with an overstable putter. And that looks exactly like what you were trying to do there, probably with the A2 again. Yep, that was an A2, and I just uh, didn't want to let go of it because I love it so much. And so now I'm about five feet away from that pavilion uh, right off the tee. Um, and there is absolutely no straight line from there. Zach peers the gap there oh. a little deeper than he wanted. He's going to be up. He's got a that. double stack of trees right in his way now. Ben goes for the more inside gap, which is also a great play. Get in. Ooh. <laughs> it's off the mulch. Puts it well inside circle one. Great look at a birdie to finish his round. Martin reaching for his breaker again. Takes a great, great line. Just kisses a trees down in the ditch. Really, really <laughs> weird angle that I, you would never practice here. There's a Spike Kaiser forehand at like 20% power. It gets me into the circle, so. Very well done. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it. Let's see if Zach can end on a good one here. Oh, good bid. Just a little bit low and left. He's beside himself, but that's okay. He's actually beside a pine tree. Oh, wow. and a great putt from Martin there. That's that's more the Martin we're used to seeing. Such a, you can tell there's a difference. That was such a confident stroke. There was no doubt that was going anywhere but the center of the basket. Maybe even a little bit of an angry stroke. Oh, oh my no. gosh. Wow, Ben, I am so sorry. That is a heartbreaker. Yeah, that was a uh, – yeah, you don't see that very often. He hit absolute dead center, and sometimes the absolute dead center is the worst place to hit. Um, and it's just extremely unlucky. Yeah, that's when you want to put that two and a half on the scorecard instead of a three. Yeah. Zach taps his par in as well. And with that, it looks like we're going to have a tie at 17 under through two rounds between you and Martin. Let's see what the rest of this leaderboard looks like here in just a second. 
Yeah, so Martin and I were tied after round one. We're tied again after round two. But now we're going to be joined by Isaac Robinson. Um, and Grady and Jamie Keep are actually tied, but the PDGA um, number is going to go to Grady on the tiebreaker. So he's going to join us. Yep. And if you notice, I was right there behind them one stroke worse. So the tiebreaker doesn't matter. <laughs> I will be on chase card no matter what, but I'll get to play with that Jamie. That is how this golf works, unfortunately. It's going to be great. I'll get to hang out with Conrad on the um, on the uh, catch cam. He usually hangs out with us up at the chase card. Um, and I'll get a really, really good view of you guys playing on the lead card, uh, trying to knock down the win on our next round from the gold tees. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we will see y'all on round three.